This is a house on wheels, standing in an abandoned parking lot in the zombie apocalypse. Unlike other survivals, this vehicle will only break down and will not have the opportunity to improve or repair it. My team prepared a large scale map, many abandoned locations and super dangerous zombies to see if I could save my motorhome in these 100 days. Here it is guys, my magnificent motorhome and zombies already running towards me just as usual. You guys won't succeed today. I appeared near a small abandoned town. My motorhome was standing next to me and a huge number of zombies were already running towards me. For now guys, let's leave our motorhome here and let's go and see if we can find at least some kind of gun because we guys have to spend another 100 days here. Over time, the zombies will destroy my motorhome and while this hasn't yet happened, I could calmly loot the town and find the necessary resources for survival. Great, bad. Do you want bread? This is my bread. Give it back. We won't go up the second floor guys because it's unsafe and there might be a dead end there. The important thing is that these zombies do not touch my motorhome because in this survival, it can not be repaired at all. And if it is destroyed, then survival will land at that very second. I managed to defeat the zombies and finally wanted to take a ride in my new transport. No gasoline. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we have to look for it. I understood everything now. We won't go anywhere until we find fuel. So I went to loot the city. It's a whole city, look. There's even water tower and a lot of buildings here. As you can see, zombies are also quite usual here. During these 100 days, my team really worked very seriously on the environment. The locations looked really abandoned and felt like a zombie apocalypse. Having looted the first building, I went further into the city. I needed to hurry because with the onset of night, it'd be impossible to survive without shelter. Have you ever seen an axe lying on a pedestrian crossing? Well, I've seen it. Seven damage instead of four. Not bad. Press J to explore the location. Wait, what? Wait. Oh, I'm standing right there, look! So, it turns out that this way I can see this location. One of four notes, question mark, defeat the zombies. Maybe some secret dungeon will open. Okay, about the location. Mustang Town is a city that was named after the fastest horse that was trained here for racing. Unfortunately, this was a couple of centuries ago. And today, it's an ordinary town that lived its own life until the zombie apocalypse happened. There's a supermarket icon there, so on the first day, we 100% need to stock up on food. So let's go there now. None of my survival had such mechanics and I was quite pleasantly surprised. This way we'll be able to check out almost any location during these 100 days, find different notes and complete different tasks to open all sorts of secret dungeons. And most importantly, build a plan for exploring the location. Especially considering that we'll have to think a thousand times before entering some location on my motorhome. Brick, I found some brick. Does three and a half damage. Ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -bum. I'm being attacked by a zombie. Well, look, when you have a seven damage in practice, the zombies can be destroyed in three hits. The main thing is that there shouldn't be so many of them that it'd be impossible to handle them with an axe. On the way to our supermarket, we'll loot some more nearby ruins, I guess. I wouldn't really call this a home anymore. Here we have some food, some ammo. Oh, wait, no, it's a battery. Battery? That, that's really good. A note near the laptop. Okay, zombie, wait, I'm reading the note. I noticed that even zombies can be creative. One of them was rummaging through trash cans, collecting debris, and making some strange abstract sculptural object. Although maybe he was just looking for something tasty. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. And as you can see, in this survival, we completely abandoned boxes that can be opened and looted. Now you need to look for all the objects lying like this on the table or in some other tables. Or in general, for example, just on the floor. The first day was slowly ending and we still haven't found gasoline and still hadn't looted the supermarket. At least one of my goals had to be accomplished today. So this is the entrance to the store. Now I don't want to go in there at all. After defeating the zombies in the supermarket, I was able to find some canned food as well as water and decided that the supermarket would be a good place to wait out the first night. Finally collected some wood, made myself a crafting table and starting tools. And this was the end of the first day. Second day guys, and as you understood, I decided to wait out the night in the supermarket. I didn't really have any other options. Quite a lot of zombies spawned during the night. It's even scary to imagine what would have happened if I hadn't found the shelter. But I found it, so we'll never know. On the second day, my main goal was to finally find fuel, rev it up and start traveling in my motorhome. My idea guys, is if we started the game here and there was a motorhome right next to us, then most likely I can find fuel in the city. I just really hope so. On the second day, 
I completely scavenged the entire city, found a lot of cool items, resources, and even some armor, but there was still no fuel here. Okay, the last thing we haven't explored here is this water tower. There's even a road leading there, so I guess we should go there. Zombies are still weak guys, enough that is in every 100 day survival about zombies, they're constantly modernized and improved. Here guys, it's also the case here. Their strength will increase, their health, and uh, so on. At the water tower I found the last note that was in this location, and now I've collected all four. I also found wheat and watermelon seeds, they were just lying around in a house like this. But in the end, there was no fuel in the city. It's sunset again, why is the time flying so fast? Look, let's be honest, shelters on water towers, I personally haven't seen it anywhere, so we're doing it. On the second day, I finally made myself a normal axe, began to mine wood, and also dug myself a small mine to get the required amount of cobblestone. At that time, it was difficult for me to say whether we would have some kind of permanent base, or whether a mobile home would become a shelter for the entire 100 days. It all depended on how the game progressed, and the further it went, the more difficult it would become. Because only on day 10, the zombies would start attacking the motorhome. Until this moment, they will only aggro at me. This is our good morning, guys. It's good that the zombies are not touching my mobile home, though. I managed to make a canopy like this overnight, and I was surprised, but it turns out there's absolutely no water in this water tower. But an entire room like this. Actually, I needed to continue the search for fuel, but I realized that without normal protection here, there'd be no way I'd be able to find it. So I had to make some armor. Today, according to plan, I have to make at least some armor. I would like to make an iron one. Zombies for now, guys, are not a problem at all. As long as you can easily kill them with one or two rounds. But in the future, this guy's will change. The first step was to find the cave, and it didn't take me much time. There's the good news and the bad news. I found a cave, that's good news. But the bad news is that there's actually zombies here. Okay, I've never seen anything like this before. Of course, zombies jumped out the cave and I had to spend time and nerves dealing with them. In any unknown situation, a pillar of three blocks will always save us. Basically, I spent the whole day searching for such caves and the resources in them, but I was able to find a lot of iron. It's a new day, guys. Check it out. I made myself a new window like this, installed a furnace, and even made myself a chest. And well, most importantly, we now have some really cool armor. And look, it's day four and we really need to find this gasoline, so let's set off to look for it. As I said earlier, the map was simply huge. There were completely different locations on it. But most of all, we're interested in gas stations, because they contain the very fuel that's needed for a mobile home. And on day four, I was able to find such a gas station. Wait, there's something interesting there. This seems to be exactly what we guys need. It's a gas station. If we can find gasoline here, I'll be really happy. Well, zombies, beware. Are you okay? We're just swimming here in the waterfall? Oh, oh, ow, 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 okay. Jokes aside, they can attack me from either side. After a little showdown with the zombies, I decided to open the information tab about the location. Gas station purity. There's no notes here, but there's a question mark. Collect a can of gasoline. So guys, that means it's here. That's really good already. It certainly looks really abandoned. Okay, let's immediately get the coal. And here it is, guys. I think that's exactly what we need. Canister. Great. Finally. I think we found it. Now we can fuel and finally start our motor home. And upgrade for a gun. Um, can we use it? No, not yet. Well, oh, look, an ATM. Wait, can I withdraw money here? Uh, doesn't work. So there's a computer and even a microphone, look. After collecting a can of gasoline, I opened the information about the location again, and you have no idea. But a clear place appeared on the screen where the question mark was located, along with the coordinates. As I understand it, this icon appeared in this menu because we completed the task. That is, we found a can of gasoline. This place was behind a gas station. After digging up a couple blocks, I found a chest there, and it contained some really good loot. There's also such a bridge here, and there's some kind of tower there, and what What's more, the road goes further. We won't go that far for now, but still, let's take a ride on our motorhome. Otherwise, why are we even here? After four whole days, we finally return to the essence of our video. Survival and an amazing journey in a motorhome in the zombie apocalypse. We have to explore the most abandoned locations imaginable, fight zombies, and of course, protect our motorhome on wheels. Let's go! Well guys, we're starting to move in our motorhome. The most important thing guys is to not let the zombies seriously damage it. Because if this happens, then we'll have to say goodbye to the house. But the most important thing is that every 10 days the zombies will pay more and more attention to my mobile home. So in this survival our transport will really have to be protected. I haven't gone far guys and as you can see there's some kind of passage into the forest. I want to go and see what's there. There's some kind of camp and there's just a crazy amount of zombies there. No guys we won't go there. I don't even have enough ammo and the bat is almost broken. So we're just gonna turn around and leave. 
Luckily enough, in this zombie apocalypse, there were a lot of roads, and most importantly, locations along them. The first such place was the locations with tree houses. So, let's open the menu. John's cabins are a place where everyone can be with nature. Watch sunsets and listen to the sounds of leaves. Book by phone, pay daily. This is the location that we have, guys, and as you know, I like that there's no zombies here. We can calmly check everything out. First of all, of course, I would like to find guns, but instead, I found a cowboy had. No, well, yeah, you know, it's not bad either. So it's really quiet here. Let me probably drive the motorhome here and I'll show you in more detail what we have inside. As you can see, there's a door here and yeah, it opens. Let's go inside. Here guys, we have absolutely all the amenities. First, of course, there's a furnace and a workbench. There's also a wonderful bed here, and if you want to wash your hands, there's a wash basin like this. There's also interesting stuff on the roof. Firstly, there's a satellite dish. Also, we have barrels of water, and well, if you could wash your hands and wash your face in general. This motorhome has absolutely everything. At the time of shooting, due to a small bug, the storage boxes where you can put all your items did not appear. In these 100 days, there's not a single upgrade that can be put on it. It's already fully improved. Another question is that all of this can slowly fall off along with the damage from the zombies. Especially scary for the gas tank. I really hope it stays with me until the end. New day. After waiting out the night, I went further along the road. There are not that many days left until the zombies start attacking my motorhome. In the coming days, while survival was quite easy, I wanted to explore the locations as much as possible. And also, maybe build myself a temporary base somewhere to explore the surrounding area. As you can see, we're continuing to drive your motorhome and quite quickly. So look, we have a gas station ahead and, and more zombies. Okay, let's stop and turn off the engine. Don't touch my motorhome. I know that for now you're not aggroing on him, but aggroing on me, but it still change on day 10 and it's coming soon. By the way, the zombies animations are so cool. They're new, we've never actually used them before. On the way, I came across a new gas station and it was just perfect because gasoline tends to run out quite quickly here. There was nothing interesting in the information about the location, so I decided to quickly collect the loot and move on. It's a new day guys, we're on our way, everything is fine, the zombies haven't broken anything yet, so that's it. I decided it was a good idea to make a temporary base from which we could explore the surrounding area. I'm still driving and skipping all the locations. You and I will still have time to loot them. Another issue is finding a good place for a base. It's good in a sense that we can put our chest and walls there, drive a motorhome there and just calmly begin to develop. Sometime later, at the end of day 7, I finally found such a place. It was great because there was a fork there, a crossroads on all four roads. I think that we still have to make some kind of base. I drove somewhere really far away and I think that we have to set up some kind of camp here. Build four walls and we'll be based here for now. Because you saw that we have a whole crossroads here, you can go in all four directions. I thought that this place would be the best time to build myself some kind of base. Maybe temporary or maybe a fully fledged one. On the first day of our construction, I didn't have time to do much, literally the minimum area to simply protect our mobile home. Good morning, do you feel it or rather hear it? Uh, hello to all the zombies, how are you doing here? I see you're all having a lot of fun. It's not boring for them to just hunt me, but I didn't even do anything to them. The 8 began with the fact that a huge horde of zombies had to be taken somewhere away from the base. Having done this, I went to the mine to get resources such as wood, cobblestone, iron, and of course sand for glass. Besides this, I also collected barbed wire. It was scattered in different places all over the road. Anyone who's been watching my survivals for a long time already knows why it's needed. On day 9, we finally got normal walls. The construction of any building was far away, so for now I only made a canopy. It's day 10, in fact nothing much has changed. Zombies, me, the motorhome, but now they'll attack the motorhome, even if it's just standing there. And yeah, we'll have to do something somehow, or like invent something. If you remember, when we were looting the very first gas station, I saw some kind of abandoned house as well as some kind of tower. Today I decided to go back and check what interesting things I could find there. Well bridge just like any other bridge. As it were, only zombies are chilling there, but it's kind of obvious. Yes, the bridge was broken and I couldn't drive it on my motorhome, so I restored it. I got all the rubbish and the goods that was on it and moved to the other side of the river. The challenge has already been completed, now let's look at this tower. The tower's unusual, well, and I feel like it hides many secrets. Nah, I'm just joking, let's go. Okay, it's clean here, look, we got ammo, some food, and coal. Okay, 
Straight up coal is really good. You know, I was not so much interested in getting to this tower as it was in finding out where the road leads next. And it leads to another road. We're back on the highway and there's some kind of warehouse here or maybe it's a workshop. Oh, guys, there's a can of gasoline here, look. So wait, can we open the menu for this location? Oh, okay, Siemens workshop. I didn't know that I had my own workshop, but so be it. Okay, an ancient workshop where ancient cars were repaired. Now abandoned due to the outbreak of the zombie apocalypse. Okay, it says here that there's one plot node in this location. Let's try to find it. Ammo, a new gun, okay. W wait, a diamond shovel? No, well, ammo, food, but a diamond shovel? And here's the note. The zombie apocalypse spares no one, especially this workshop. Maybe someday it'll be revived, but today this is not possible. Yep, okay, I was interested in listening and reading. It's already evening, guys, and I think we'll slowly return home. The only thing is that this road, this highway, it goes in the same direction where my base is located, it turns out. Purely in theory, we can drive along it, and it's 50-50 whether we'll go where we need to go, or as it were, we'll end up in some forest where zombies will grab us at night and survival will just end. Well, look, there's only one moment where I had half HP left, so we can give it a try. Still. I was lucky. The road went through the city, which was located right next to my base. I'm home, guys. That was risky. I really don't know what I was thinking. But the longer we survive, the more careful I'm gonna be. On day 11, I finally decided to loot the very city that could be seen from the walls of my base. I assume that there's gonna be a lot of zombies there, but me and my motorhome is also a lot to handle. So let's go. The town, guys, is cool. We're going with friends to explore it, and I have very, very very many friends. Before of course looting the city, we'll definitely open the menu now and see what we can find here. So there's a lot of buildings and icons here. Yeah, they're a task for the question mark. Clear the city of all vines, illuminate the city, and restore the fountain. We complete all these three tasks and get some kind of exclusive secret place. It seems like there's no zombies here yet, so let's just take a look around. There's just ammo lying on the floor and first house guys. Okay, there's a lot of loot here. Actually, the city was small, but there was a lot of loot. All this was quite unusual, but the essence of the survival video is that the further it goes, the more difficult it becomes. And now we'll still have time to experience it for ourselves. With, by the way, an abandoned fountain, and decided to immediately complete the task of restoring it. Great, we've completed the task with the fountain, now let's try to explore the city hall. The abandonment of these locations, guys, is just crazy. Despite this, there's still butterflies here, and yeah, I hear zombies. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually here. According to the information in the menu at this location, there was only one note, and I found it in the city hall. It was day 30 after the zombie attack. There's almost no population left. Those who were able to survive settled in the city hall. We don't know what to do, supplies are getting smaller and smaller. Perhaps this is my first and last note. There is a secret in the city, but not everyone can reveal it. Maybe this is somehow connected with that exact question mark that we can open. Naturally, I won't be able to loot the entire city even in two days. So we'll just gradually come and take what we need from here. I would actually take this lava and I would really need it, but zombies don't burn, so it's pretty much useless. Day 15, and it was a special day, because today, for the first time during the survival, our motorhome was damaged. Wait, stop! Antenna! Antenna, wait, no! The zombies broke my antenna! Oh my god! God, is it just gonna fall apart piece by piece like this? Although it was sad, it was a lesson for me. And now whenever I parked my motorhome, I surrounded it with barbed wire. Yeah, of course, when we had to leave some location, we had to spend some time dismantling this barbed wire. But these are the new realities in which we now have to survive. Returning home on day 16, I decided to improve the base and start building towers. It's a new day, guys. I finally decided to fill up our box, so to speak. I also think that there isn't really enough space here, but we're just at the beginning of survival, so we won't spread ourselves too thin. The towers took a little longer than I thought. I also continued construction on day 17, and also mined metal plates on day 18, with which I decorated my base. Day 19. Today I decided to go explore new locations. Not far from my base, there was an abandoned cafe with the billboard, Zemanoids will live forever. Okay, let's get off. As you remember, we protect ourselves as much as possible with barbed wire and shoot the zombies a little bit. Now we have time to carefully loot this abandoned place. And yeah, guys, 
this is tough. Can we crawl under this plywood here? Okay, great. The location looks really abandoned, and yeah, I'm really going here, in addition to food, to find medicine, at least some bandages, because without them it's really difficult to deal with the zombies. Oh, wait, look, there's a bandage there, perfect! But as soon as I turned away from my motorhome for one minute, the moment of no return came for the motorhome. Well, okay, maybe we can go back. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, go away, go away, what? What? Zombies, no, stop! Guys, th this is insane! Look at these zombies, they just... The, the model of the motorhome has changed. Look, there's holes everywhere, rusty, everything is rusty. Ah. Uh... Okay, we need to start the engine and leave. To be honest, at the time I was very upset, because I wanted to brag to you about receiving practically no damage to the motorhome, but I set the bar too high for myself. Day 20 has arrived. Today, zombies became stronger, they have more HP, and the loot that spawns in the locations has been cut by 50%. Zombies have been strengthened and loot has been cut by 50%. Mutated zombies may appear. Just two days ago, our survival was going great, and it was probably the best start in a hundred days in recent times. And this series of failures didn't end here. On the 21st day, caves began to be generated absolutely all over the map in small quantities. You can say what is so bad about it, but I'll say that every cave is a dark place. And in dark places in a zombie apocalypse, these same zombies appear four times more often. Guys, it's day 22. Basically, I did practically nothing the previous days. Sorted resources a little and thought about a plan for how we would continue this survival. Maybe my team went a little overboard with the hardcore because we're basically on the 20th actually 22nd day it's hard for me to even imagine what will happen next today i was able to visit a new location this hotel was called fishing according to the description in the menu fishermen stayed here and after a long journey went fishing the next day as you understand we don't really care about the catch at all in terms of fish for sure but we'd like to find good loot here given that there's less of it now i can already see zombies in the windows so let's do this now we just can't pass by and we definitely need to collect everything that is here. At that time, I didn't yet know that on day 30, the loot would be cut off even more. We actually managed to find a lot of interesting things. There were a lot of rooms and apparently the fishermen left a lot of their things. For example, I found about seven fishing rods and they were all called differently. Fishing rod for fishing socks, okay. Fishing rod for catching zombies, all right. Well, look, for this entire hotel, I was able to find four canned goods, two bandages and just about 20 rounds of ammo. In the menu of this location, it was written that the question mark would only open after day 40. There was no way we could fulfill this condition now, so I moved on. Day 23. I was a little upset by the amount of loot that I found and therefore decided not to return home. Besides, our motorhome is easy to travel on at any distance. The most interesting thing was how I survived the night. Guys, I don't know whether you've seen this or not, but I'll try. In my survival, you always see how I get up on poles, but now with the motorhome. Well, what other options do I have? I spent several days en route to the next interesting location. Surprisingly, the open world felt very real. There were a huge number of roads, and where it seemed that the path was too straightforward, there were always some country roads. And on day 25, one such road led me to a trailer park. Yeah, guys, it's a zombie apocalypse, but the noise of birds is very, really pleasant. The leaves, the wind, and abandoned trailers. Someone traveled like this in the zombie apocalypse, and... Then these trailers remained here. This is the kind of loot I managed to find in the trailer park. And you yourself understand, if you look carefully at how much loot there was before, it's just leftovers. I was on the way back for about two days. On the way, I even saw a beautiful waterfall and decided to take a couple screenshots near it. I'm home, guys. Finally. There was very little loot in the locations, but at least there was a little bit. I had a few reserves left and I was wondering where I could really get good resources if there were no airdrops here. The loot that spawned in locations was the Decreasing. And then I remembered about the secret dungeons. As you remember, back in the very first city in which we started, I needed to destroy 350 zombies so that a secret dungeon or passage would appear in the menu. We already found such a place at one of the gas stations. The theory that loot is not cut there still needed to be tested, so I spent the 28th day in preparation.
station. And on day 29, I moved back straight into the city. Guys, I crafted myself a few axes, looked at the crafts of several clubs, and, well, took enough ammo, just in case. On day 30, I finally arrived. Zombies spawned with some frequency, but I spent this time trying to find this cache on my own. And, by the way, guys, I don't even know what to call it, because it seems like a secret dungeon, or a question mark. Let's call it a question mark. Find which I know not. That's what I would say. In terms of searching for the question mark, everything was pretty much unsuccessful. But I found the basement. I don't know how I missed it before. There were just a couple of signs here from my builders. Do you know what dish Zeman loves most? Okay, I'm interested. Pasta. Any pasta. Well, okay, that's true. What's this thing even doing here? Guys, this task took me a lot of days to complete, and you might wonder how the zombies didn't break my motorhome during these days. And everything was pretty simple. I placed it on the roof. Come on, come on, get up! Okay, here the zombies will definitely not get him. All right, that's perfect. We just need to light this place up. Yeah, guys, I know this is a little crazy, even though I often do zombie survivals, but I don't remember doing this yet. But modern problems require modern solutions. Day 34, and I finally did it. So here it is. Surprisingly, I ran through this place a couple of times, but I didn't even think about finding and seeing this door. It was just here. So uh, guys, this is not just a chest, it's a whole room. You freed the city from the zombies. Despite this, they will of course continue to spawn here. But the loot spawn rate has been increased by 5%. So it was minus 50, then it was minus 10 on day 30. Now we have minus 55, but it could have been minus 60. So. That's pretty good, I guess. There were also three first aid kits in this room, but what I like most is that it turns out it's possible to influence the appearance of loot. I'm already planning to move back home now, but before that, I want to say one thing. Think about it. If I can, by opening these question marks, influence the loot spawn rate, then maybe I can influence some other things. For example, the spawn of zombies, whether they can or cannot break blocks, or if I cannot restore or repair my motorhome in any way, then Perhaps I can influence those factors that are destroying it in the first place. On day 37, I was back home. The new information had to be digested and the caves around my base had to be closed. Because these zombies were constantly crawling out of there and they were super annoying. Now guys, these zombies, they're still just running after me like fools. But once they're able to break blocks, it's no longer gonna be fun. Maybe they'll start jumping and speeding up. So, yeah, no. So, I have to light up all of these caves near my house. Okay, come on, let's run, let's run, come on, let's light everything up. And, by the way, do you know why I can't just close them and wall them up? Because they'll accumulate there. And, uh, when will they be able to get out is when they're gonna be able to break blocks. So, this option for solving problems does not suit us. On day 40, there was bad news and good news. I closed all the caves around the house, but the zombies now have way more health. Of course, during these days when I tried to cope with the caves, it was not the only thing I did. I managed to make myself a small farm. Yeah, only by day 40. But before that, come on, understand, there was no time at all. It's day 41, guys, and do you feel it? The smell of relief? Well, actually, we already have our own food, autonomous food. It seems so far we didn't damage the motorhome more, and we've closed all the caves around, and everything is going quite well. As you remember, we didn't have endless gas, so today I decided to go looking for gas stations. Ideally, I wanted to find three or four gas stations in order to stock up on canisters, at least until day 70. Here it is guys, our gas station. I hope to see some other interesting locations along the way, and most importantly, to return before day 50 with canisters and improve my base. I spent a couple of days driving through gas stations, and unfortunately guys, this time we also had some damage. This time we lost a barbed wire, but the motorhome was still moving, so survival continued. On day 45, I finally decided to build a house on my base, and on day 46, I made myself a diamond pickaxe and went to the cave to mine obsidian to make an enchanting table. On day 47, I also made an anvil, and and on day 48, I gathered clay. Getting clay was not the easiest task, because zombies constantly try to get me. Day 49, there was a small abandoned building near my base, which I put off looting until later. But it turned out that it was far from a small building. I think I have enough ammo guys, but we better deal with the zombies with an axe or something. You see, this is our base, and there is a city in the distance, and here's the place I want to loot. I don't know why I avoided it, it just seems like I'd loot it later, but this moment has come, so let's go in. 
It turned out that it was a kind of bunker that was hidden under the floor of this building. Guys, I don't know where we went, but I hear a lot of zombies and here they are. Having dealt with the zombies, I began to place torches and gradually explore this place. So, wait a minute, let's close up here and look at the menu. An ordinary house by the road. This is a lie, guys. It's straight up a lie. There's a whole bunker here. I'm surprised that the loot spawn here is pretty good. That is, despite the fact that our loot is now seriously cut, there is still enough of it. I don't know how much loot would be here if I'd reached this place before day 20, though. I decided to collect different tables, cabinets, and chairs for decoration in my base. This will definitely come in handy. Okay, guys, let's leave because I'm pretty scared to actually leave my motorhome like this for the whole day. I've protected it well enough, but it's still pretty risky. I understand this, I kind of understand it. Day 50 has arrived. Half of the survival was over. However, hardcore was just beginning. The zombies became stronger and there was even less loot. And at the same time, hordes of zombies now appeared, which randomly spawned around the map. If I were to see them, my chances of survival would be about 10%. It's day 50, guys. Our news on updating the map is not really good. Now we'll watch from afar so that no horde of zombies attack us. Well, we have to upgrade because my guns are not the coolest and my armor is still iron. In order to get very cool things, you had to go to really cool locations, so I went in search of them today. What do you think about our travels on our motorhome, guys? So far, it's still more or less alive. As you can see, there have been no serious breakdowns yet. I'm not gonna continue driving around the map and try to find some good loot. At least I hope that I can find some kind of armor. From day 51 to day 55, I came across small locations. Some of them were dangerous, because there were a lot of zombies there. And unfortunately, like last time, our mobile home was damaged. Damaged. Guys, there's a lot of zombies here. There's actually a lot of zombies. They're both attacking me and the mobile home at the same time. Wait, no, 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 no. Now our motor home looked like this. In addition to the visual changes, we have lost the crafting table. The good news is that the gas tank was still there, which meant we could continue driving. It's just insane, guys. There's no way I can fix it. This is super new. This has never happened in any of my survivals. No upgrades, no ability to fix it. Absolutely complete hardcore. And as it turns out, there's only one attempt. On day 56, having barely arrived, I finally found a large location. It was an abandoned prison. This is something big. I simply cannot leave my mother home here, so I'll just use the proven method. Come on, go up! This guy is an abandoned prison. The motorhome says hello to you from above. So what? I can see it from anywhere. In the menu of this location, it was written that there are as many as seven plot notes here. And this is so far the largest number that I've ever encountered in this survival. Let's start from this corridor, but behind these walls, there's a lot of zombies. Little by little, I began to explore each section of this prison. Oh, guys, I can actually feel this. These zombies are way stronger than before. We need to be more careful. Okay, the motorhome is in its place. Let's keep going. In in the location menu, there was a question mark, and to find out where that question mark was, you had to find a legendary coin. So in addition to the cool loot that I was going to find here, the legendary coin was also very important to us. Looting sector after sector, I actually managed to find a new gun, a new chest plate, and also a couple of interesting items. Well, guys, of course there's also canned food, all sorts of standard vanilla Minecraft items, for example, there's quite a lot of string, but I still haven't found the legendary coin. I wanted to find this coin so bad that I decided to stay until day 15. Walled up my motorhome as well as settled in a box above it. Guys, I know this might look strange to you, but in this survival, there's no other way. It's day 57. In the morning, of course, there were a lot of zombies. So it was only around by lunchtime that I continued to look for the coin. And by evening, I finally found it. Okay, nice. That's it, guys. We found it. And here's the question mark, guys. Let's go. As in the city, here at the question mark, there was a secret room. And in it, I received a plus 15% to the spawn of resources. Now, this, guys, is no longer fine. This is actually perfect. So, in total, we've corrected about 20%. On day 64, I return home. As you may have noticed, I drove for a long time. Collecting resources, fighting off zombies, but having time to spend the night somewhere else in the zombie apocalypse is not an easy task. In the coming days, I had a plan to improve the house, namely from the outside in the form of protection from zombies. The zombies can't break blocks yet, but I think that we'll spend 100% of the next few days digging a ditch, protecting everything with barbed wire, and of course, 
those bushes with berries. And by the way, they deal damage. By day 70, my base has been improved. Now I was definitely ready for the zombies to break blocks. On day 71, I enchanted all my items that I could. And on day 72, I went to the very city that was located near our base. Because we had some uncompleted tasks there. So guys, remember we restored this fountain? We still need to light up the entire city and remove all the vines. This will take some time. Just look at how much time I spent in this time lapse to remove all the vines. This was not an easy task and it took three whole days, as well as a lot of shears. On day 74, I placed torches throughout the city. I arranged them until I saw the task was completed. The bonus was a whole set of cool armor, which I gladly put on. On day 75, I set off on my journey again. This time, not far from my base, I came across a bandit camp. I don't know how I didn't notice it earlier. But there were no robbers there anymore, only zombies. There were not that many houses though, but Due to the fact that we increased the loot spawn rate, there was more than enough of loot. Having looted the city, I decided to go home. And by day 77, I was there. Yeah, guys, every time I look at my motorhome, my thoughts go something like this. Why can't it be fixed? I wonder to what extent he can change its appearance. This is unknown at this time, and it's better not to find out. Well, okay, the motorhome is safe for now, and I think we could do this really interesting thing. Let's change the floor here, and it's better, of course, not to dig with my hand. I spent the entire 70 seventh day on this floor. Now our base looked more technologically advanced. The only thing that stood out, it was this entrance. Every time I needed to leave our base, I had to tear down all these blocks and then put them back. This was really annoying. On day 78, when I was sorting my items, I saw that we had some zinc, which meant that the create mod was installed on this build. I went straight to the case for all the resources from this mod. It's a new day, guys. Nothing is changing here. As usual, there's a lot of zombies. And I have some news. Now I'll show you what I managed to do. Spoiler, you're gonna be shocked. Look here and we click. Whoa. Well guys, are you shocked? Now we have normal gates at the base and we don't have to spend a billion hours leaving the base. After this guys, you can call me the king of mechanisms. It's day 80 and it was cloudy. Starting today, zombies could break blocks. And at night, the percentage of zombie spawns increased by as much as twofold. There's no time to waste guys. I'm going in search of new locations. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, that was stupid of me. Let's leave. Okay guys, I think our motorhome is still alive. After a while, I came across a new location. There were two story notes in this location, and I think there was a lot of interesting loot. So, I went to explore it. Okay, listen, there's actually a lot of them here. They're coming. Also, because it's cloudy today, they might spawn more. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, get away from me. There's a lot of zombies, guys, a lot of zombies. Iron, string, and a note. Today was a beautiful day. The zombies didn't attack us at all. In honor of this, we threw ourselves a holiday, made a fire, and fried marshmallows on it. Can someone give me marshmallows? I'd love to have a snack. Okay, let's move on. On day 81, I arrived at some huge location. It was a sawmill. When we come to any location, as you remember, we quickly have to put barbed wire around our motorhome like this, because we need to preserve it as much as possible. Even in this survival, the zombies will have time to inflict severe damage to it. So guys, the first thing we see here are signs of radiation and zombies. Somehow I haven't seen this location here before. And as it turns out, a lot of zombies died on their own about these barbed wires. What do they want from me? I guess I'm just surviving here. They're all getting angry at me all the time. Let's remember our main goal, guys. We're approaching the end of survival and we need to loot the maximum number of useful items in order to protect the base or somehow increase the level of our armor, guns, and so on. What is unusual in this location is that the trees are pretty strange here. They're orange. It's probably all radioactive. I can't say that we actually found a lot of useful things here. However, we found this fence in the loot and secondly, it can be assembled here just like that. Maybe we'll make it an additional protection against the zombies. And now it's already evening, so we need to get out. Let's collect our barbed wire and floor it. The sawmill turned out to be a pretty good location. We found a lot of building blocks and it's time to get home. 82nd day. As you remember, there was a city near our base and I found a few buildings there. Having left in the morning, I was met by a huge number of zombies and I had to fight them off. Uh, zombies again. Okay, that's bad. At first, I wanted to take them away from my base, but then I realized this was not an option. Unfortunately, in this trial, we lost the furnace, but most importantly, the gas tank was still in place. The gas tank is really important. From day 83 to day 86, I improved the base. I even made a lowering mechanism for a motorhome. I hope that in a critical situation, this very mechanism will help us save the motorhome and get through these 100 days. On day 87, a notification came into the chat that there was a good loot at a certain coordinate. I wondered if this could be a trap, but even if so, it was pretty interesting to check. Well, I don't know guys, the last few days have been quite difficult. And 
and I think that if we have a chance to get cool loot, we should take advantage of this chance. Let's go and hope that our mobile home will still survive. Yeah, so it turns out that somewhere in this location there is a lot of loot and there's a lot of zombies here too. I hope that we'll be able to find more ammo because I'm running out of it very quickly. So, okay, that seems to be it. So far, I can't even guess what kind of location this is, but now we'll go inside and try to find out. We have a hole in the wall here and we can go through it. The entire building is made of wood, which is pretty unusual. Oh, wait, gun, 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 I found a gun, okay? Wait, it's not that I really need an AK, but there is a site here and we have quite a lot of ammo for it. So we'll definitely make use of it. And apparently in addition to zombies, there was also a lot of loot. Um, so guys, this is a courtyard it turns out and there's some houses here. So a lot of improvements and a lot of bamboo. And everything would have been fine, but suddenly zombies attacked me. Have HP guys, have HP! Wait, wait, no, 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 listen, they've become much stronger. Wait, they're still coming. How many of them are there? Wait, where are all my first aid kits? Did I leave them in the motorhome? Okay, let's have a quick snack. Oh, 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 guys, this is really scary. There's so many. Obviously, there was a lot of loot here for a reason. To get it, you first had to fight the zombies. Now, guys, I wish I could just get on one of these boats and sail somewhere into the ocean. Okay, they're surrounding me. Okay, wait, I forgot I have barbed wire. How could I forget about that? Wait, they're still passing through. They're still passing through. That's it. You won't go through in any way. Well, look, I really got through them all. It was tough. It was pretty on edge. I just ran out of all the ammo, guys. Well, there's a bit left for the AK. And soon it's gonna be sunset, so let's quickly collect all the resources we see here. Loot the houses and run back. I hope that we'll find more resources than I spent. As a result, I was able to find a lot of items that I needed here, and also found a lot of ammo. On day 89, we were already home. It took me the whole day to sort the resources, and I also made a second layer of our walls, so that if the zombies started breaking them, I would have more time to deal with them. Day 90. Zombies have been upgraded to the maximum level. Now they could spawn up to an unlimited number. The zombies could dig, climb on all sorts of obstacles, and be more aggressive towards my motorhome. As you remember, I made an elevator down from my transport, but it simply led to a dead end, and now I found a use for it. We'll dig a tunnel through which we can safely get out of our base. It took me four days to dig a good tunnel. The room also needed to be lit to prevent zombies from spawning there. What I expected to happen on day 100, but it happened on day 95. A massive horde of zombies came. Guys, guys, wait, no, 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 wait. Wait, they're coming! Guys, they're actually coming! Why now? I'm absolutely not ready for this! Zombies began to attack our base. I had to be ready at any moment to get into our motorhome and drive our way through the tunnel. Guys, if we have to drive for five days without stopping, we simply won't have enough gas. There will be no time for us to stop. That's it, guys. I can't deal with them. I, I simply cannot deal with them. We need to get into our motorhome and go down. We quickly go down into the tunnel. That's it, guys. Let's go. Just look at how many of them there are. It's I'm just lagging. No matter where my motorhome is on the map, zombies will always attack it because they have reached the maximum level of development and everything would be fine i could just drive endlessly if we didn't have unlimited gasoline why didn't i just take care of this in advance i made a tunnel i made a secure base why did i miss that moment with the gasoline just two or three cans would be enough maybe even one would be enough to just drive quietly until day 100 by day 99 i was still on the move but as you can see my motorhome was pretty dead at this point nevertheless i could still drive or rather i was on the move for the last seconds. Okay guys, that's it. We're out of gas. So look, there's no zombies around yet. We've gotten quite far away from them. But they'll spawn now because it's gonna be night soon. For this guys, I took three stacks of barbed wire. We have a couple of minutes to set it up. Using radial movements, I spread out all the barbed wire I had. This was supposed to help me last the whole night, and if I did this, I would pass the survival. Come on guys, come on. We just need to survive the last night in this Minecraft zombie apocalypse. Every survival I go through is memorable for a long time. There is something soulful in our survival. In addition to hardcore battles with monsters and the same base construction. As for me, the most important thing in our videos is the atmosphere. It is this that allows you to remember each trip for a long time time and i hope that this video gave you this atmosphere that's it guys we survived until morning we actually survived guys 100 days in this zombie apocalypse don't forget to watch my other videos on the channel zeman was with you good luck to you all bye bye